is an adventure on its own. Because of many reasons. As you can see, I have a new background. Not only that, I'm in an entirely new place because I'm for the first time filming from my own new apartment. Here behind me you see some of my bookshelves and I realize I have too few books. Like there's a lot of space on my shelves, which means I can buy more books. This is gonna be a mess because as I said, new place. I don't really know like the distance yet and like the light and the angles and stuff like that. Like I had it all figured out back home, but like how to focus the camera now? No clue. Also, there might be an echo because I still need to fill out this room with like things. My couch has not arrived yet. So there might be an echo. I apologize for that. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Speaking of sound, I, my voice is a bit raspy perhaps. I have a slight cold, but that might also be a thing that my voice is just a bit off. My hair feels weird. I need to go and have a shower. It's a lot. Okay, we're trying this out. We, I, I don't know. I don't know. We're gonna have to see. Today I thought that I would do a check-in on on my Goodreads reading challenge. As you might know, or perhaps don't know, I don't know what you know, I challenged myself by the start of this year to try and read all of the winners from the Goodreads Choice Awards 2020. Every year Goodreads hosts a Choice Awards where it's the readers, the members, the users of Goodreads that get to vote for their favorite books. They have so many different categories like fantasy, fiction, sci-fi, romance, YA, debut author, they have 20 different categories. There's usually a lot of like discussion regarding this because many consider this to be a popularity contest more than a sign of like quality. I wanted to test this out and try and see if I could read all of the winners during the year of 2021. It's currently October, we're 10 months into the year, only two months left. I'm pretty certain that soon enough the new nominees for the Goodreads Choice Awards will be announced. Last year it was announced like end of October, so probably will be around the same time. And the winners were announced on the 8th of December last year. I had a goal of trying to read all of the winners and hopefully some more of the nominees in order to form my own opinion whether the right book won. This is inspired by Emily Fox. She does a thing where she reads many of the nominees for the Goodreads Choice Awards. I also saw someone else do this. Like, a lot of people does this. It's not just me. For me, it was just my own personal challenge. I never really made a video about it. I made a video where I reacted to the winners, but I have not really made a dedicated video to this challenge. And I have mentioned it briefly in like my TBRs because I've been picking books from that group of books for my TBR and such. It's been a personal thing, a fun thing. I can already like spoil that I'll probably be doing something similar in 2022. I'm blabbering a lot, but that's basically like a lot of the background regarding this. And for this video, I actually thought that I would just share how it's been going for me, what books I have left to read, and if I plan on completing slash fulfilling this challenge. The honest truth is that I probably won't be able to read all of the books that I had hoped to read for this challenge. So I'm gonna need to prioritize and I'll just share what books I actually plan on reading for the next few months and what books I'm intrigued by but might pick up later and what books I won't read at all. The first category for the Goodreads Choice Awards is just fiction, adult fiction. And the winner last year was The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I have not read that one, I have borrowed that book from my friend though and I do plan on reading it this year. I have it right here behind me somewhere, so I will pick it up. I can definitely do that. It's a short book, I want to read it. Some other books from this category are Anxious People. I did read that one in January and I loved it. Obviously it's what spiked my Friedrich Bachmann obsession. Here on my new bookshelf I even have a dedicated Friedrich Bachmann shrine and I'm excited to continue to fill it out with more of his books. Such a fun age I already read last year. My Dark Vanessa I have that one. I'm not sure if I will get to it this year but I do have it. Glass Hotel I read. Yeah a bunch of books I want to read. I read I If I Had Your Face and The Death of Vivek Oji. Out of these nominees I believe there are 20 of them. I have read five out of the 20 books which I think is all right but I have not read the winner yet. Don't worry I will get to that. The next category is mystery and thriller. I did read the winner, I did read the guest list and I have bought Home Before Dark. Other than that I have not really read any of these books at all and I don't really plan on doing that. I don't know, I struggle with thrillers. I want to get into them, I think I would really really enjoy them. When I read like the plots of them they just don't really capture my interest. I read the winner, that's all that's needed. 
Moving on. The next category is best historical fiction. And the winner for this one was The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. This one I'm kind of currently reading, like I started it in June or July. I'm a fourth through it and I do plan on finishing it. I need to finish it this year. That is indeed a goal. I did start reading the Jane Austen Society, but I DNF'd it. The next category is best fantasy, and the winner for this one was House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. I do have this one, and I do kind of hope to read it this year. I think I will. Like, I will aim to read this one this year. I think it's like six or 800 pages long, but I do want to read it, so I'll try and prioritize it. I did read The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue, I read it last year already, so that's good. The House in the Cerulean Sea, I also read. Burning God was one of my first reads of this year. So out of the fantasy category, I've read three, and I will have read four once I read House of Earth and Blood. A bit surprising perhaps, because fantasy is my favorite genre, but at the same time, many of these are like sequels, just books I didn't really hear about. I do plan on picking more of these ones up. I would love to read Puranesi, I would love to read the Dresden File series. So there's definitely books I would like to read, I just haven't gone into them yet, I guess. The next category is Romance, and the winner for this one was From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I've been excited about this one, I even talked with some friends about doing a read-along for this one but the thing is this book is freaking expensive and it's so hard to get the hold of it's like $30 in Sweden and it's never in stock I wanted to read this one I've been wanting to read this one but like I'm just never getting to it or I, I just don't have it and I want to read it physically because this is also a chunky book so this one is one I want to read but I'm not certain if I'll be able to read it this year because I don't have it yet. Aim is to read it this year, but I'm not sure if that will happen, but I will definitely read it at least the next year. Other books here are Beach Read. I borrowed that one from my friend and I'll hopefully be getting to it soon because I really should return books to my friends. I did read Take a Hint Danny Brown. I read One to Watch last year already. I read In a Holidays last year. Out of the romance books, I read three will perhaps have read four or five. There are more here that I'm really interested in, like I would love to read You Had Me At Ola, You Deserve Each Other, because I just think it would be a good time. The next category is science fiction. Here I've only read To Sleep In A Sea Of Stars, the winner of the science fiction category. So at least I fulfilled that, and I have not read any of the other books. I've been wanting to read Harrow the Ninth, but in order to read that one, I need to read Gideon the Ninth, and I started listening to it as an audiobook, realized that it will probably do better as a physical book for me, and and I just haven't gotten the book yet. So I do plan on reading the series, I just don't know when I will get to it. But at least I have read the winner, which is good. I don't know if I'm like leaning forward too much, so if I should lean back, I don't know. I'm figuring things out. I might even be out of focus, I have no freaking clue. Next category is horror, and I barely read any horror. I want to get into it more, I just haven't. So the winner for last year was Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I want to read this one, I just haven't yet. I'm not certain if I'll be able to get to it this year. It just depends on how my next couple of TBRs turns out. But this one is on my want to read list, so hopefully I'll get to it in 2022 or something. I have not read any of the books in this category. The next category is humor. Don't ask me, I have no freaking clue what this means. The winner for the category humor was Strange Planet, and I did read Strange Planet. I at least completed this category, and that's the only book I read from the nominees of this category. The next category is best nonfiction. The winner last year was Stamped, and the thing with this book is that there are multiple versions of it. There's like an adult version, a YA version, and I believe a middle grade version was just released. The one that won was the YA version, but I actually listened to the adult version of this book, and I kind of regret that I should have listened to the YA version. But because I have listened to this book, I'm considering me to have read the winner, because it's basically the same book, just adapted differently to different audiences. I did read Stamped, and I've also read Hood Feminism, which I really enjoyed. Other than that, I have not read any of the books, but at least I'm two for two with the highest rated books in this category. The next category is Best Memoir and Autobiography. The winner last year was A Promised Land by Barack Obama, 
drama. I have not gone into it yet. I did get the audiobook from Audible, but I have not listened to it yet and I'm not sure if I will have the time for it or if I will bother with listening to it because I don't really listen to audiobooks at the moment. And this one is like 29 hours long or something. So that's a true commitment for me that I'm not willing to make at the moment. I am also intrigued by Untamed and All Boys Aren't Blue, but I have not gone into them and I'm not sure I will. No books read from this category so far. Next category is Best History and Biography. The winner last year was Cased, The Origins of Our Discontents. I have not read this one. I planned on doing it, but I just, it hasn't really been available, neither as an audiobook or like an ebook or such. I don't think I will get to this one. I have not read any of the other books in this category either. Next category is Best Science and Technology. The winner last year was Life on Our Planet by David Attenborough. I also did plan on reading this one, but I simply never got to it. I do think I have the audiobook. Possibly that I used the credit for that one. But as I was saying, I'm not really listening to audiobooks at the moment, so I'm not sure if I will prioritize this. I much rather prefer reading physical books at the moment. No books from this category either. Hopefully we'll get to some more interesting stats soon. We then have best food and cookbooks. I allowed myself in my own personal challenge to skip this category because I'm not gonna read some cookbooks just to complete a reading challenge, nah. -uh. I'm all for reading cookbooks and like sure vote on them and stuff, like I don't mind, please do that. But for me, it wasn't a part of the challenge to try and read a winning cookbook. Let's move on. The next category is best graphic novels and comics. And the winner last year was Heartstopper Volume 3. I had not read any Heartstopper volumes before, but this year I have read the first, second, third, and fourth volume, which was released during the spring. I did read a winner for this one. I typically don't read comics or graphic novels. It's not really a thing. It's something I would like to explore and discover a bit more, but I haven't really. I would love to read Fangs, the one that ended up on second place. And also that book is just stunning on its own. Not really a thing, but at least I read a winner. Next category is best poetry. Once again, a category I don't really read, but I did listen to Dearly, the winner. Perhaps there would be some other books in this category that I actually would be interested in. Once again, won't prioritize that in 2021. Next category is Best Debut Novel. And the winner last year was Such a Fun Age, and I had actually read this one last year. I fulfilled this challenge even before I started it, which is quite fun. I also read Cemetery Boys. I did give Jane Austen's Society a go. I want to read My Dark Vanessa. I did read One to Watch. So I have read a few books from this category, actually, and there are more that I would like to get to. So out of the 20 books here, I read three of them, or four if you count my DNF, and I'm definitely interested in at least like four or five more of them, honestly. Like, I would love to read some of these books. This was a great category last year, I feel like. Next category is Best Young Adult Fiction. And the winner last year was Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo, and I did listen to this one this year, so challenge fulfilled. Once again, there are some books in here that I am really interested in reading, just haven't gotten to them. That's the only book I've read from this category so far, but I'm sure that I will read more. Next category is Best Young Adult Fantasy and Science Fiction. The winner last year was The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black, and I did read this one last year because I read The Folk of the Air series last year. Once again, already completed that challenge. Of course, I've also read Midnight Sun, and I did start reading The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. I have not finished it yet. I am I hope I will sometime. It's in my pile of shame, but hopefully I will continue to read it at some point. I've also read Cemetery Boys, as I said. I DNF'd Fable. I read These Violent Delights. Here I read five books counting my DNF, six if you count my currently reading. And there's definitely more books in here that I'm interested in reading as well. Next category is Best Middle Grade and Children's. You might also know that I don't really read middle grades or children's books. It's just not a thing I do. The winner last year was The Tower of Nero, which is like in the series of Percy Jackson, I think. It's the same author and these universes and series kind of go together. So this was one of my main issues because like, do I start this series, which is like a couple of series into this universe that has been created, or should I read the entire Percy Jackson series within this year, or like how should I approach this particular book, because this one is not the first in a series. I think it's the first in its particular series, but it's not the first in the universe, if you understand what I mean. So I had not really decided how to approach this, but nevertheless I did borrow 
the first Percy Jackson book from my friend and this one I plan on reading before the end of the year and I will count that towards completing this challenge because otherwise I would need to read like 10 or 15 books I think in order to complete this challenge and that won't happen. I will read the first Percy Jackson book and perhaps it will draw me into the universe and perhaps I will want to read more in the future and sometime in the future I might actually get to the Tower of Nero if I enjoy the series. So obviously, because I don't really read middle grades, I have not read any of the other books. And then the final category is best picture book. Not so surprisingly, I have not read any of the books. The winner last year was Anti-Racist Baby. I have not read it. And not so surprisingly, I have not read any of the other picture books. So that's just like a quick or not so quick, depends on how you see it or how I edit this but like an overview of how much I read from each category and which winners I have read. Just to conclude and summarize, so far I have read 9 out of the 19 winners. 19 because I did not count the cookbook category. If I do read the books I plan on reading by the end of this year, The Midnight Library, The Vanishing Half, House of Earth and Blood, and also the Percy Jackson book before the end of the year, I will have read a total of 13 of the winners. I know in my video where I reacted to the Good Read Choice Awards I said that I needed to reach 17. That won't happen, I just know that. And to take that pressure off I will be pleased if I read 13 out of the 19 winners. Then for the books I am interested in reading, I'm just not certain if I will get to them this year. We have From Blood and Ash and Mexican Gothic. And if I read these two as well, that will be a total of 15 books out of 19, which I would say is a pretty good grade. I'm not reaching my first set goal, which was 17. Instead of pressuring myself, I should just try and go for the books I genuinely want to read. That's sort of it. This is my little check-in for how I've been doing with my Goodreads Choice Awards challenge. Please let me know, do you usually vote in the Goodreads Choice Awards? And have you read any of the winners from last year's awards? If you have, please let me know which ones. Other than that, I think that's that. I hope you enjoy this new backdrop. I'm once again sorry if the sound will be a bit off and like the angles and stuff. I'm working on it, I'm learning. If you're interested, I can definitely do like a new bookshelf tour. It's pretty empty, I would say. Like I have ton of space for new books she says now and will regret in a month when there's no space nevertheless let me know and i will definitely do that thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for like sticking with me even though my uploading schedule has been a bit messy because of my move and stuff like that but i promise you i'm so excited about making content and now i have this new space and so many more possibilities and opportunities so i really really hope that you will stick around because i have many great things to come i'm gonna stop talking Thank you so, so much for watching. Please take care and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. You gotta just go for it. Don't think about what comes